Hi, I'm Jackie. It's my mission to reach as many people as possible to assist them in getting in touch with their inner creativity, reduce their stress through handwork, and find some peace and expand their joy in this busy world. Today I want to talk a little bit about embroidery. The humble embroidery. As old as time, so many images connected with embroidery. And some people really love embroidery and some people kind of dismiss it or kind of take it for granted. And today I want to encourage you to consider embroidery a really, really useful tool in reducing stress. Brain research has shown that stabbing something repeatedly thousands of times, thereby creating a repetitive, absorbing, a deliberate behavior, needle, thread, in here, thousands of times, stabbing, really can help reduce stress. I think this is brilliant. I would really love to find ways that I can reduce stress easily with not much time. And I found embroidery kind of fit that bill. This is an embroidery piece that I have been working on for years, and I don't regret a single minute of it. It took uh, one inch at a time of work and I did it in stolen moments. And I keep coming back to that idea of stolen moments. People seem to have a misconception that working on a hobby uh, needs hours of time and lots of materials and money and all this investment. But no, really, if you have something, you know, kind of sitting there, I don't know, a person that doesn't have a pile of colored thread somewhere in their house and a bit of thread, uh, a needle and a bit of fabric. And just by combining those three things, for five minutes at a time can help regulate your breathing, interrupt negative loops of thoughts and uh, stop rumination even. You know, things happen, family, work, home, world events. Um, but by giving yourself a little downtime, the brain starts to kind of soothe itself. Hormones are flooded in it just by the simple act of repetitive action, deliberate, and creating something along the way that is uh, something you can treasure. So we're going to talk about embroidery today. Simple uh, stitch called um, French knots or colonial knots, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's begin. Okay, so we're going to be working with French knots and colonial knots today, making some very tiny, very precious sampler work or design work by building up and coloring in swaths of areas with a collection of teeny, teeny, tiny knots, which I will show you how to do in just a moment. So I love handwork. I love embroidery, needlework. Um, this particular kind of handwork is very satisfying because it doesn't take too long to finish. Also, it is very portable and can be done in stolen moments, sitting in the car waiting for your kid to get out of a class or in the evening while you're watching TV or on an airplane. I'm going on vacation this week and I'll be packing one or two little needlework projects with me. Um, and they're super, super straightforward. So I'm a big fan of Teresa Lehman Designs. Right here is her little name. And I have bought a number of her kits over the years. And I met her in person at a dollhouse show in Chicago many years ago, probably 2008 or so, 2010. And I'm not affiliated with her in any way. But uh, I found her technique of teaching. And you can look her up on YouTube and on Facebook, I think. Uh, her kits are sold in lots of different needle workshops, um, but she would be the first to say, you don't have to buy a kit. All you need is a little bit of muslin, an embroidery uh, hoop, and a needle and thread. You can draw a design on here of any size, any shape, any content, and then you just start filling it in, building it up till you create an image that you are happy with. So. In order to do those things, let me turn on my bright light. Oh yeah, it is on already. Get a little brighter. Okay. Um, and there we go. I'm gonna zoom in the tiniest bit. So the first thing you wanna do with your uh, muslin is to make sure it is tight in the embroidery hoop. And you can use any kind of embroidery hoop. This was literally like $1.99 somewhere, probably at Walmart or something like that. And um, you can use plastic ones, wooden ones. Um, and then 
you want to make sure your muslin is what they call drum tight. So not all, embroid or not all embroidery requires this, but this one works best if it's drum tight so you can hear it. So with it being drum tight, you get a nice firm surface to work with. I love to keep a little magnet you can see there uh, to keep my needle on helps it from losing it tiny needles these are very tiny needles it's a single strand of thread um, I do use size 10 beading needles that accommodates one single strand of thread without too much uh, trouble and then with your uh, threads you can use regular old thread or you can use embroidery floss you can see over here this is open that up a bit wrong way this is my collection over the years. You can buy them for 39 cents usually, uh, 45 cents uh, a skein, or four for a dollar if you get a good sale at one of the various you know, hobby stores. So without more ado, let's see, we're gonna make this nice and close up. So you take your needle, pop it through from behind, make a French knot, Hold your thread taut, not too tight, just taut. Go over the top and under, and then pop it right back through, right next to you where it came out. And you have the tiniest little knot there. And to do a double French knot, you just do it twice. And you get roughly, maybe not true double, but you get a larger knot. And you can continue making them bigger, triple French knot, down it goes, and up to about a quadruple. Four turns is about all I've ever seen be successful because the more turns you get on there, you can see it can get a little bit more chance of it getting tangled. And also from the triple to the quadruple, you don't get that much of a difference. So what Teresa Lehman uh, taught was the teeny tiny French knot or the colonial knot, which is about the size of a double French knot. So a colonial knot is you're holding it and then you're going to go from the left, go over the top and back through. And you can see it is about the same as the double French knot by building up a whole pile of them. And I would say most of what you're going to do will be this size knot. The French knot is very tiny. It's usually just used for the teeniest little details or a little line or something like that. Um, the colonial knots, which I'm doing a number of times just so you can see it, builds up a little more quickly. So up, over the top, figure eight, back in. You can see, you can build it up and create quite a field of color. Sometimes you might use the French knots to fill in. If you hold it up and you see there's like the tiniest little hole that maybe you missed when you're doing your colonial knots or your double French knots, um, you can use the, the single French knot to uh, fill in the gaps. So with that, you can also, the magnet holds on from behind, which is sometimes pretty nice because then, there's my magnet, sorry, it was out of the thing. I put the, the thread, which is there, there we go. Sometimes it's a little awkward and being on the inside is a little bit more protective for your needle when you're traveling about. So this little embroidery hoop that I use most often which I can link in the show description if they still have it. I've had it a long time. I think they still sell it. Um, is, and I, I, I have no affiliate links at this time, just so you know, um, is nice because you can have two projects going at once and it stands on your lap. And so you actually have both hands free. You're not holding it while you're trying to do it, which is very convenient sometimes. It also comes apart. It's pretty easy to take apart. Um, this is a project as I'm going on vacation. I want to finish up. I've been working on it for quite a while and I'll put some, uh, what do you call, updated photos in my Instagram as I finish it up. Uh, 
the everyday artisan at the underscore everyday artisan on Instagram uh, is the tree of life, which I always have loved that image. And I've worked on this a long time, but truly it has been in what I call stolen moments. So I don't feel bad how long it's been taking me to finish it. I haven't sat and focused on it more than 10 or 15 minutes at a time. And I get maybe, you know, a little three quarters of an inch done at a time, but it still gives me a lot of joy. So I just wanted to show you some of the other possibilities from Teresa Lehman. So you saw the gingerbreads. These are the dancing, the waltzing bears. This is one of my favorites. I want to get this one done for Christmas. Put it in my Christmas dollhouse, I think. And then this one's much more simple. Very sweet to give you inspiration. The Jacob bean tree. And this one I've never done. This is the one I want to do the most and put it into the large dollhouse that I have. And I will get to that sometime maybe this Chris this winter. So I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to hearing your comments. Remember, needlework is one of the least expensive, most portable, least time invested need time to be invested needed uh, of many many crafts and that's why I really really enjoy it uh, doesn't take much time doesn't take much material and it doesn't take frankly much talent if you're making simple things which is kind of nice because crafting doesn't require talent and with that have a great day thanks for joining me